As a composer, do you feel overwhelmed with the sheer number of sample libraries on the market? Hi, it's Simon from Composing Academy, and today I'm going to be comparing a variety of orchestral sample libraries, ranging from absolutely free right up to the high-end libraries. Sample libraries are the main ingredient when it comes to helping your music come to life. In the early days of general MIDI, the sounds you had at your disposal were from devices such as keyboards or sound modules, which are mostly emulated sounds. They use synthesis or modeling to make an approximate version of a particular instrument. From the early 80s onwards, musical equipment made by companies such as Emu and Akai had the ability to play back real recorded sounds or samples. As technology has progressed and developed, so too has the ability to make greater use of more detailed sampled instruments. Nowadays with computer processing so much cheaper, we have vast sample libraries available to us, some of which are completely free. A sample library is basically a collection of sounds and instruments which have been individually and painstakingly recorded. These sounds can then be mapped onto a keyboard, so when you press the key, you're actually hearing that real recording of an instrument playing back at you. In the last 15 years or so, orchestral sampling has exploded, with companies such as Spitfire Audio and Orchestral Tools recording some of the greatest orchestral players in some of the greatest spaces in the world. Rooms such as the Hall at Air Studios or Abbey Road Studio One are used regularly for sample recording sessions, recreating the conditions used by top A-list film composers for major Hollywood blockbusters. Sample libraries come in many forms, with just about every instrument and style of music catered for. You may have a jazz sample library, catering for instruments such as drums, guitars, and saxophones, or a library of sounds and instruments from a particular region of the world, such as the Middle East. Today, I'll be concentrating on orchestral sample libraries though. I'm going to start with the free library and then look at other options, which gradually increase in price. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite and which one you think offers the best value for beginner composers. I'll also put together a table here, which I'll be filling in as I go along, detailing the differences between each library. I've got here the middle section of a piece of mine, which I'm going to play with each of the sample libraries, so you'll be able to easily compare each one. I'm also going to play each library straight out of the box, meaning I haven't added anything extra onto the sound, such as reverb or EQ, with only a limiter used on my main output to prevent the instruments from distorting if they get too loud. Recorded with the world famous BBC Symphony Orchestra at Maid Vale Studios in London, Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover is available absolutely free if you're prepared to fill in a survey at Spitfire Audio's website and then wait a couple of weeks for your download links to be sent through. It features various instruments which are found in the orchestra and is a cut down version of the BBC Symphony range, which includes their core and professional packages. Because it's available as a free product, there is not as much detail in the samples as the higher offerings. So there's only one dynamic layer per sound, along with one round robin per instrument. These terms can sound a little complicated, but they're basically variations which help to make the samples when played as performances sound more realistic. So let's take a listen to this section of the piece, which uses just the BBC Discover sounds. The next stage up is Nucleus Lite by Audio Imperia, which is available for $99. Nucleus Lite is a cut down version of the main Nucleus library, but offers the same rich and cinematic sound, although with a smaller choice of instruments and articulations. Instead of each section of the orchestra broken down into individual instruments, you get what's called ensemble sounds or patches, which are groups of instruments recorded together as one cohesive sound. So in Nucleus Lite, the main string section options are two sounds. Strings full ensemble sustained, which are for the longer string sounds, and strings full ensemble spiccato, which are for the shorter string sounds. Ensemble patches do make the writing process quicker, and these patches are often used by composers during the sketching part of the composing process, 
where you might be trying to get your ideas down as quickly as possible. Nucleus Lite comes with ensemble patches for all sections of an orchestra, including choir, along with some extra options for percussion and even some sound design elements. So let's take a listen to the same section as before. As this uses ensemble patches, I've copied and pasted the individual instrument tracks, such as the violins and cello tracks, and combined them into two tracks here. This is the same for the brass instruments as well. The next sample library I'm going to try is actually a series of products called the Original Series by Spitfire Audio, where each section of the orchestra can be bought separately at a cost of £29 each. I'm using three products in the series here, Epic Strings, Epic Brass and Woodwind, and then Cinematic Percussion, for a combined price of £87, which is roughly $119. These three packages in the Original Series are essentially taken from their Albion 1 range, which I'll also be demonstrating in a bit but again with some limitations. Recorded in the hall at the famous Air Studios in London, this is another ensemble library, meaning that each main family of the orchestra is grouped together in sections. As each section is available separately, this series of instruments can be a good stepping stone for beginners after getting their feet wet with the BBC Discover library, especially if budget is a factor. So let's take a listen. Next up, we have Spitfire Audio's Albion 1. The company released the original Albion around 10 years ago, which helped to put Spitfire Audio on the map. It was an incredibly successful product, and they've since gone back and re-recorded elements to bring us this Albion 1 package. Albion 1 is currently available for £399 and is described as a renowned industry standard orchestral sample library that provides all you need to make film music. Again, it's primarily an ensemble-based library, and as well as covering all of the four main orchestral sections, it also features a large array of loops and synth sounds in order to give you a complete toolkit for media composition. So what do you get for £200 that you don't get in the other libraries? First of all, there are more articulations or playing techniques than we get with the other libraries, such as pizzicatos and colenios for the strings. You also get what's called legato articulations, which helps to transition between adjoining samples for a more smooth and realistic feel. Finally, there's also greater control over the sound via more microphone positions. In the Spitfire Original series, we basically get a close microphone and a room microphone. For Albion 1, that jumps up to four different types of microphone positions. Close, tree, ambient, and outriggers, which you can play around with to give you a lot more control over the way you can shape the sound. Let's take a listen to the section of the piece using Albion 1. Finally, we come to Metropolis Arc 1 by Orchestral Tools. Recorded at the Teldec scoring stage in Berlin, 
Arc 1 is another ensembles library, focusing this time on achieving power and a large sound. Its current price is 549 euros, or around 460 pounds, plus VAT or sales tax. With this big brash sound, straight away you can tell that this library doesn't cater to every style of orchestral writing, but for the piece which I've been demonstrating the other libraries with, Metropolis is an ideal candidate. As well as ensemble patches in each of the four main orchestral sections, except for the high woodwinds, there's also an amazing choir section, along with some rock elements such as guitars, piano and a drum kit. Because of its focus on achieving a huge sound, there are not as many dynamic layers as Albion 1, but there are arguably more articulations or playing techniques available. These include techniques such as Bartok pizzicatos, which are a more aggressive sound than a typical pizzicato. The library also focuses more on the drums elements of the percussion section, so I wasn't able to include the crash cymbals or tam-tams in this rendition. So let's take a listen to the piece, this time played by the Metropolis Library. And here's the completed table with all the libraries along with their stats, so you can easily compare each one. So that's the five libraries, ranging in price from absolutely free up to £460 plus. Ultimately, each sample library has its own strengths and weaknesses, and if you eventually build a collection of libraries, you'll be able to pick and choose your favourite sounds from each one to use in your music. Of course, the most important part is the music that you write, and not the tools. It's very easy to invest a large amount of money in various sample libraries, but remember that putting time into composing in order to practice and get better is ultimately the best investment you can make for you and your music. Let me know in the comments below which is your favourite and which one you think offers the best value for money, particularly for beginners. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the like button as well.